Locus. Locus, right? So as we said before, there's this idea that uh, these shapes we've been talking about, right? Circles, straight lines, parabolas. We are used to thinking of these as shapes that are connected to some kind of equation, right? Um, and we are going to get to that idea. But before you get to that idea, the idea of a locus is, um, here, here's my definition. It's a rule that defines, uh, or you should say a geometric rule, I suppose. Because remember when I gave you all those instructions, I was always saying, you know, be this distance from that or from these things or equal distance. They're all geometric terms. Okay. Um, it's a geometric rule that defines a set of points. Okay. But you also remember I said, uh, you don't have to just say, well, as an alternative to saying a set of points that are all just fixed in place. Uh, you may also say, rather than a set of points, um, or a point, a single point, that moves. Okay? So, for instance, let's go back to the very first one I said. There's someone standing in the middle, let's all gather around, right, and, and have everyone standing the same distance from them, okay? Uh, and that's the set of points idea. But I could have said, let's make it a point that moves, right, by picturing, say, you know, you've got a, a, a stick in the middle, stuck in the ground, okay, and then you've got like a, I don't know, a sheep or a cow or something, and you tie a, a rope around its neck, and then you tie the other end to the stick, and you say, okay, here's the stick, and here's your... Um, Here's your sheep. Greatest illustra illustration of all time, okay? And because um, it's tied there, right, how is it going to move? Well, in exactly... Sorry. That's a terrible circle, but you get the idea, okay? So it's a single point that's moving, again, according to this geometric rule. Okay, does that make sense? So, uh, what do questions look like in uh, this topic, right? Well, it'll look like this. What you start with is this geometric rule, which, which is in words, okay? Geometric rule. In words, okay? And typically, the questions will say, all right, why don't you take that rule, and can you translate that for me, okay? What would it mean if I, if I had the same geometric rule, <coughs> but instead of using natural language, can you use um, an equation? All right? Um, that's, that's generally what this topic is about. Occasionally, um, you'll be asked to go the other way, right? You go, say, like that. They'll give you some kind of equation, and they'll say, now tell me. Can you describe what this is like? Okay. Can you describe the locus? That's actually the language that they'll use in the question. Okay. Yeah. So when they're saying locus, is that just like finding the actual equation? That it... Yeah. Basically. Okay. Uh, in in a sense, right? The locus is uh, this part, the geometric rule, and you can have it in either form. Okay. But when they say find the locus, they really should say find the equation of the locus. That's what um, properly written questions will say, uh, and this is what they mean. Go from here to here. Okay? Alright, so let's start with a simple example, um, the one that we did at the beginning, but let's put it in sort of coordinate geometry terms. Okay? So, um, example one. A point P. This is often how it starts. Um, you can see it's looking at this second idea. There's a point and it's sort of moving around, jiggling around, following a certain rule, right? Now, because it's moving, okay, you can't say the point is 3, 4 or 1, 1, or negative 5, 10, okay? Because if it were, then it'd be stuck there. It's static, it can't move around. So in order to have it moving, we say it's x comma y, okay? So it's x and y coordinates are variable. They can change, right? So that's why, you know, these things, these can change, okay? So a point P and its coordinates are x and y moves such that, now, when you see those words, such that, 
what's about to follow is the geometric rule. They're about to tell you the, um, the behavior that this thing has to exhibit. Okay? Such that it is um, always, hmm, let's see here, one unit away from the point. Okay, so there's the setup, and the actual question will be, find the equation of its locus. Okay, now, depending on uh, how well you're tracking with me and how the cogs in your head are turning, um, this question's quite simple. I've deliberately started off with a simple example, and you could probably just, just write down the answer. Okay, you could just actually say it to me because um, you're very familiar with this kind of shape, right? But sometimes the geometric rule they give you will be weird, it'll be confusing. They'll be like, the distance from here is twice the distance from here, which is the angle for blah, 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 okay? So you can't just write it down. You've got to show some working. So uh, let's show how it'll actually pan out for a question like this, okay? So um, I'm going to say, here's, here's my working out. I always begin, like in most questions, right? You want to pick out the most important piece of information. Okay? So you'd say, you know, there's P, which is at X, Y. Then there's the other point, which is 1, 2. Okay? And then they tell you that the distance between these two, um, distance AP, right, should always be equal to 1. Okay? Now in this question, because it's quite simple, that's, that's all there is. There are no other facts that we need, and we can work this out now. I'm going to start from here, okay? There's, you can see I've, I've taken words and I've already written down an equation. This is the beginning of our geometric rule and equation. Okay, so I've made the first step. Distance AP. Go all the way back to U rate, okay? That's when you learn the distance equation between two points, right? So rather than just saying, you know, words, I'm trying to go towards equations, right? What is the distance formula? Does anyone remember? Just give me the general form, not in this case. What does it start with, yeah? Yeah, you have Good, well done. Now, question. Um, I always had trouble with this, okay? So I wonder if you have um, as well. I always got confused between which ones were negatives, negatives here, and positives. How do you remember which one's which? You know. This, this equation, right, this formula, it comes from Pythagoras, right? Um, the immediate previous line is this. The sum of, sorry, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides. Okay? So when you look at this, you're like, well, that has to be plus. No one gets confused about Pythagoras, right? So if you ever think about, mm, which way is it? Uh, it's going to mess up all your numbers. Occasionally, you'll get a negative under the square root. That's one side, and then it's wrong. But secondly, just think of where it came from. Okay? All right, let's move forward. I'm going to substitute that in here, but here are my actual specific details. Here's my x1, y1. And here's my x2, y2. Okay? Now, don't get too confused. The x1 is x. Okay? And the y1 is y. Okay? They're not actual numbers. I don't know what they are because they can move around and they can change. Okay? So my next line will be the square root of. All right, what have we got here? We've got x minus 1, all squared. And then I've got y minus 2, all squared. That's equal to 1. Okay. Now, in a sense, I've sort of, that's, that's the hard part. I, I've got my distance. This is an equation, right? But I can probably make it a little better, right? Because the distance formula is always positive, right? But uh, this means I can only be on one side of it, the positive side. I can actually go on either side, as you guys did as well when we were clustering around Evan, right? So I can actually square both sides, and that's where we get the familiar equation of a circle. It's one squared, but it's just one, yeah. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm, I'm finished, right? It was a pretty simple question, yeah. Do you need um, to start with a distance model, or can you start to trade off a distance squared? Like, uh, okay, you mean, wait, hold on. Do you mean to say that? Like okay. to write down this instead? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I would say, in theory, right? Uh, I think you demonstrate the same amount of understanding. Should be fine, right? 
However, I, I prefer this way of writing it and doing an extra step because what this does is it ties it back to what the question actually said, which was about um, this part here, this is the distance, always one unit away. Okay, so for that reason, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and go ahead and do that. And later on, sometimes, it'll be important, you have to, no choice, okay? All right, so, that was a pretty simple example. What was the second one? We said there were two points, and I wanted you all to be equidistant from those points. Okay, so you help me. Uh, let's get rid of the sheep. Sorry, sheep. Don't worry, there will be plenty more sheep this year. I like drawing sheep. Because um, they're easy to draw. You know, anyway. Uh, I once tried to draw horses, and I'm like, this is a bad idea, like the neck and... Alright, so I'm going to have two points. What should we call them? We're pretty boring mathematicians. D and S. D. Okay, sure. I, I was, I mean, was going to say A and B, but that, that's fine. All right. um, give me some coordinates. What's the first one? Not, not Jesse, he's going to give me something weird. Please save me from Jesse's weird coordinates. One, one, one. one, one. <laughs> Okay, we get Kuhan's boring coordinates, okay? And minus something else? Minus, 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 one, minus one, six. One. Okay. There, it's done. All right. Oh, now, by the way, sorry, I actually forgot a crucial step. Um, we didn't, I didn't ask you to, but usually it's a good idea to. Often they'll say, find the equation and then draw it, right? So really quickly, what does this look like? Um, you've got one, two. Okay, there's my center, and everything's one unit, so I'm going to go this far, this far, this far. <laughs> it's known as the parent circle, but it, it'll do me. Okay, so I'm done. I should probably put the, um, the center there, and there's an intercept. Finished. Do we always have to draw the um, no, you don't. Usually if they want you to, they'll tell you. But I think, particularly because we're starting out, it's a good idea to draw it. Okay, just so we have an idea of what we're doing. Two points. Okay, and we'll say P, our variable point, right, X, Y, okay, moves so that it is equidistant from D and S find the equation of its locus. Okay. Now, we've got already the, the important bits um, down. I'd probably start off with this line here. Okay. Before I launch into formulas, I want to say what the formulas are referring to, right? So I'll say distance PD is equal to distance PS. Okay. So there's my translation, if you like, from words into an equation. And now, I can write my two distance formulas, because that's all these are. Um, let's see here, P to D, that's going to be this. And the other way. Okay, now you have a go. You simplify out. Um, it looks at first like it's going to be a terrible, awful mess, because when you square it out, then you've got squared stuff. But you sort of already know what you're expecting, right? Because we, we got out there and we actually stood in that pattern. So. You know it should simplify down. Go ahead and do it. If you've got something that's drastically different, you know something's gone wrong. After that, we'll draw it. <laughs> 